brief overview on uh, the industry and how Aethetronics fits into it. Um, we'll cover some failures that we can in transformers. Uh, touch briefly on partial discharge. Dive into the, a few of our products that we offer to do this testing, and then cover some of the tests that you can do, uh, do on transformers. So a little bit more about Aethetronics. Uh, those are the you know, manufacturer high voltage test equipment. Uh, for testing a broad range of electrical apparatus such as transformers, cables, switch gear. Our test equipment is used throughout the electrical industry from generation and transmission, all the way to distribution, manufacturing, and even in some commercial settings with our ENC. So some of the types of transformers we see uh, in the industry would be uh, power transformers, distribution, uh, traction transformers, which are usually used in transportation systems. Uh, there are other types such as transmission. And special transformers such as CTPTs, reactors, generators, etc. So this is a graph plotting the age of the transformer in years uh, versus its failure rate. Uh, so as you can see, maybe not technically really small. Uh, right around the past like 25, 30 years, uh, we start seeing a significant spike in transformer failure. So this kind of you know demonstrates how vital it is the older it gets. Here are some stats on uh, how expensive failure can be. Uh, if not properly maintained, they can lead to uh, significant material loss and uh, an inability to provide whatever service the transformers are able with. So in this five-year example, um, there were 94 transformer failures in the U.S. Uh, with total losses of over $286 million. So here's a list of uh, all the different tests that you can run on a transformer. Um, the bolded ones with the numbers next to it are the, the corresponding model numbers of the, uh, of the units that we sell. Uh, so salt gas analysis, or DGA, uh, winding resistance is something we cover, uh, winding turns ratio, or TTR, insulation resistance, capacitance 10 delta, uh, frequency response analysis, or FRA, uh, partial discharge testing, uh, dielectric spectroscopy, short circuit impedance, and So in general, when maintaining your uh, transformer, there's three aspects, well, for uh, chemical, which um, uh, for oil dissolved gas analysis, or DGA, um, we don't actually make a unit that tests that, but I know that GE does. Um, we do visual inspections uh, regularly, check for mechanical damage, just rust, to see if the fans of the porcelain or porcelain are cracked or broken, if there's any oil leaking, et cetera. You can also do thermal inspections with a thermal camera, and they can reveal uh, cold and or hot spots. So our main focus is uh, electrical testing. Uh, all these tests can be performed to show how the transformer is doing, to, to show how the transformer is doing uh, internally. By using a combination of tests as part of the transformer, you're getting a more detailed picture on the total health of the transformer. Let's give you an idea of where the failures occur in transformers. Uh, the main locations of failure in the tap changer and windings, uh, which together account for over 60% of failures. Uh, on the right is a diagram to show you where each part of the transformer is. I mean, the bushings up on top, the core is obviously inside with the windings wrapped around it, uh, tap changer up down to the left, uh, and the paper and prep insulation uh, surrounding the windings. Uh, these are some of the types of transformers. Uh, failures seen in transformers. Uh, electrical and dielectric failure account for the majority of failures. Uh, and this is why we offer equipment to perform these types of tests. So, so dielectric failure uh, can include partial discharge, uh, you know, tracking over time, such as power factor, uh, any type of flashover that can be seen with transformers in use. Uh, electrical failure can happen with uh, open and short circuits, essentially any sort of breakage in the windings, uh, poor joint contact between the winding and bushing and transformer, uh, ground deterioration, and uh, floating potential, which would increase the voltage of the transformer. So different transformers uh, fail in different ways. Uh, on the left is the location of failures for substation transformers, and on the right is step-up transformers. So uh, as you can see from both, the majority of failures still happen in the windings across all transformers. Um, but uh, they get a little different. They can, uh, substation transformers is also mainly in the taps and the bushings and the step up and uh, in the lead exit. So 
So partial discharge. Uh, one of our biggest recommendations for testing is uh, PD testing, partial discharge testing. Uh, partial discharge is when there uh, isn't a complete discharge or flashover within the unit, but there are small pockets in the insulation, paint, oil, and they essentially charge up and discharge. This is an indication of uh, deteriorating material, and it can uh, generally happen in cracks or bubbles uh, within the material, uh, paint, varnish, oil. Uh, we believe that uh, PD occurs due to poor design and manufacturing, but it can also uh, be from damage to the equipment that occurred in transportation, flashovers over time, or damage to stain from installation. It can also originate from voids in the resins, polymers and paper within the transformer, or bubbles in the liquids and oils. It can come from metal deposits, general oil impurity, um, electrodes and insulation surfaces, such as uh, the, uh, the head bushings or the surface entry. So the two types of partial discharge, uh, inner and outer, uh, inner usually is seen within the voids of the insulation material, uh, the air bubbles, the oil, or the SS6 uh, insulation systems. Uh, the outer ones you can actually see uh, with your eyes sometimes, uh, they look like a slight spark. So PD is uh, one of the most powerful diagnostic methods available. Uh, this is because it's observed early on in failures and give you a heads up if something is starting to go wrong within the transformer. Nevertheless, it's a, a complex method. There's a lot of information that needs to be analyzed. Because of this, we recommend that operators be very experienced. We understand that you know, this company new to PD or a group new to PD, you have to start somewhere. So we recommend taking a partial discharge class, uh, really immersing yourself in it, and having you know, one or two people be the PD experts. So the apparent charge, uh, the QIEC, um, is essentially a PD quantifiable number that is usually measured uh, from pico and nanocoolings. Uh, this number is based on an algorithm that the IEC derived to categorize what is partial discharge. It states that the discharge needs to meet a certain value of charge and occur for a certain length of time to be PD. Some other factors that go with that, uh, discharge current, repetition rate, discharge energy, etc. Um, some more complicated uh, factors would be PRPD pattern, uh, charge versus voltage dependency, rate versus charge dependency, and so on, which uh, all of that would be covered in greater detail in more PD than the discussion. So the point of PD testing is to avoid all the issues you see here. Uh, it can create a lot of damage that can become more expensive than just replacing the faulty transformer, but can harm other parts of the system it's connected to. Now to get started on some of our equipment, our DDX is our premier partial discharge detector. Uh, depending on the type of transformer you're testing, you can either use a 1 or a 4. Uh, for power transformers, you need to be able to observe PD on each phase independently at the same time on the high voltage side. While on the low voltage side, you can just connect it to one DDX and switch between phases. So you can see three high voltage sides simultaneously at each phase on the low voltage side. So here's our uh, recommended uh, you know, chart combination analysis for the TDX, testing the uh, partial discharge on the power transformers. Uh, the basic package includes uh, three DDXs, uh, which allows you uh, to enable, which enables three phases to be measured simultaneously, uh, but you do the high and the low side separately. Our recommended setup would be four DDXs, which allows you to measure all three phases of the high voltage side at the same time as a low voltage side, but then you would have to move that around. But if you have a big budget and you want to get eight, um, so you can measure all phases on both sides simultaneously, and that way, if one of them failed or had issues, uh, you could convert back to the uh, unspiced route, which is four. Uh, so that was for uh, power transformers. Uh, for dry type transformers, uh, you're required to observe to observe all three phases simultaneously. You could use one DDX with multiplex key, but you would also need uh, three coupling capacitors so you can see all three phases uh, one at a time. So you can the optimized route for dry type transformers is three DDXs with three coupling capacitors so that you can see all of the high voltage phases. So, uh, our PD measurement is not, uh, it's not uh, ultra high frequency or a PD camera, which you may have seen. We recommend our route of electrical testing because it has a much higher sensitivity than a camera. Uh, during that higher sensitivity, 
you were able to get through the other connections instead of so part of the search is a high frequency current pulse, so you want a detector that can catch all those tiny impulses during testing. When doing that with a camera, um, by the time you see PD on the transformer, uh, it's probably already too late. That's more of an indication that it's well on its way to failure. While uh, electrical measurements get much earlier heads up, you can help prevent that total failure and be much more further. So for a PD measurement, uh, you need a power source to power up the transformer, and you need the ability to hypot test. So here's our, uh, I should our 700 series AC dielectric testers, uh, which uh, standard are up to 100 kVA, 100 kV, but uh, if you ever worked with us, uh, you know, uh, do anything. Uh, we can make larger customized Sorry. systems you desire. Uh, for DC hypot testing, uh, on transform bushings, you can use our APL DC digital hypot series. Uh, this can hypot this hypot test cables, transformers, electrical switch gear, motors, generators, and aerial bucket trucks up to 80 kV. So our 800 PL DC series is the only digital DC hypot on the market. Uh, it has a 7 inch touchscreen resistive display. Um, so if you have your iPhone or Android phone in your pocket, uh, you can use the stylus or remote hand. Uh, not being able to use it. Um, and you can set it up to run either automatic or manual tests. Uh, and if you like to convert that to the analog ways, uh, the display can show the analog mode you can also display it with the measurement digital. Uh, they have a lot of built-in safety features, such as maximum voltage threshold. Uh, so if you're in automatic mode, uh, you set your ramp rate, you set your max voltage, um, and it won't run really past that voltage. You can also set max leakage current so that um, uh, if you're testing leakage of a rubber apparatus and uh, it goes above that, high voltage will immediately shut off. Uh, it's going to stop the test. Uh, it also measures insulation resistance, polarity index, and DAR. Uh, and you can export all this data under USB or uh, in a CSV file for uh, the like, bottom of you, where you can look at the graphs directly. Uh, for liquid dielectric testing, our OC series. Uh, liquid dielectric breakdown testers uh, has recently been updated also to a new digital version, the uh, OC60DI, which I have uh, with me in the 10, if you want to uh, take a look at it. So this uh, uh, continues our expansion in touchscreen automated testers, uh, simplifying testing, allowing more data on the It allows you to accurately and reliably test the dielectric strength, dielectric breakdown strength of insulated liquids used in a wide variety of electrical apparatus, such as transformers, bushings, switch gears, capacitors, and well, etc. So it has, uh, just like our uh, other digital uh, high pots, it has a manual and automatic mode. Uh, it has built-in standards for ASTM, IEC, a, a plethora of other international standards. Uh, it also has built-in batteries so that you can use in the field all day. And same with our other uh, high pots, digital high pots, you can uh, export the data on a USB or view on the device. So the 2293 uh, is one of our star units for transformer testing. Uh, it's a 32 amp max current, uh, 100 volt max charging voltage. We can measure resistance from 0.1 micro ohms to 300 kilo ohms for a wide system measurement of high accuracy. You can test most transformers with this unit, uh, such as power, distribution, and instrument transformers. Uh, you can also measure the running resistance of generators. This unit also has a 7-inch touchscreen, same as our original units, uh, and it can also be exported to USB or the other device. Uh, it's an all one unit, it comes with a bag with all the connectors needed uh, to test all your transformers. Uh, it's a three-phase winding resistance analyzer, so you can measure winding resistance and TTR on uh, three-phase transformers. You can also do a heat run test, but uh, be aware that this doesn't function as a power source for the transformer to do that test. Dynamic resistance can also be measured through the tap changer app, uh, and the transformer can be demagnetized so that it, uh, it can be re reconnected uh, back to the grid once the test is done. So it's a one-time connection system um, for almost all of your tests. Uh, once you have all of your uh, uh, high voltage and low voltage side hooked up uh, and have the, the transformer well-defined within your uh, unit, uh, you can run uh, almost all your tests without changing connection. So 
So uh, getting into uh, some of the tests that can be performed on transformers. Uh, winding resistance um, are usually, uh, for winding resistance, uh, transformers you need to magnetize the full core. And on large systems, this historically can take some time. But with our 2293, um, using simultaneous winding magnetization uh, with two power sources, it simultaneously magnetizes the core, magnetizes the windings from the high and the low voltage side. So this allows measurements to be taken uh, much faster than previous units allowed. So here's a uh, comparison between uh, winding resistance, uh, the classical procedure is using uh, one power source, and then using the optimized procedure that a 2023 does, that's how the time is so when doing uh, winding resistance, um, your results should uh, never differ more than one percent compared to the factory measurement. Uh, uh, and what's on the nameplate and uh, between phases should always be less than two percent. So for a uh, transformer turns ratio or TTR, it's the ratio of the turns between the high and the low voltage side. Um, the transformer uh, by performing this test you can find if there are any uh, shorted or open circuits windings uh, incorrect winding position connections any defect in the tap changer and you can also shore, uh, show show core connection so it's very important to do uh, TTR tests uh, right when the transformer is manufactured this can give a baseline for future tests and can let you know if there's any discrepancy between the design of the transformer and how it was manufactured. Uh, the wrong number of turns can indicate a misconnection in the windings. The IEC and IEEE standards uh, mandate that uh, all the deviations should be within 0.5% of the plate reading. And also, uh, when done on site, uh, TCR can diagnose uh, open and short circuit turns, coil damage, or tap changer connection. So some tips for uh, turns ratio. Um, like I said before, the results should never differ more than 5% from what's right in the nameplate. Uh, and your results should differ more than 0.2% from pre previous measurements. Measuring uh, excitation current, uh, your tube currents uh, on your outer limbs, it should never differ by more than 10%. Um, and your middle limb should uh, never differ by more than 100% from the other two. So we recommend uh, dynamic resistance testing on transformers that you're able to see what the tap changer functionality is. Uh, that there is uh, so that there is no resistance when the tap uh, is changing automatically. Uh, when on site, you are looking for uh, tap change failure when the transformer is switching from one tap to another. Uh, and this type of testing is still in the concern state. APPs and other companies that have requested us to sign this app to be able to measure the 2293, so it's uh, one of our newest applications uh, that we designed uh, for the 2293. Oh, uh, short circuit impedance is another test requested from ABB. Uh, we developed in the interest of testing transformers during service. This is the test that now the IEC and ANSI uh, mandate for transformers. Uh, when performed on site, you can show mechanical damages within the transformer. And this is the only test that um, you have to you know, do a different connection for, you change around uh, a few of the clips and uh, short out some positions. Factory, um, this is used to check the core status when the transformer is actually being made, and then if you do this test on site, uh, it will show you core problems or any short circuit returns. So, you may be hearing a lot of uh, repeated uh, diagnoses uh, going back to uh, the point earlier that if you want to check the core of the windings or other things like that, you have to use multiple means of testing. Yeah. 
So uh, magnetic balance uh, is done by applying the voltage on one phase and then reading the voltage on the other two. Uh, and it's done using these algorithms. Yeah, like uh, in practice, so th these are all derived uh, numbers, but um, you know, th there's more than just those factors that influence uh, the result that we get. Yeah. So interpreting your magnetic balance data, uh, it's only valid for uh, star connected transformers and then any variations above 10% between expected voltage distribution and measured, well, measured results should be investigated. So measuring uh, transformer radius is for installation resistance. Uh, this is using our 5478 uh, terahertz you know, like factory. Uh, you can use it at the factory on site. It's get the amount. Response analysis or FRA. Um, this is a uh, speed strength, this is a fingerprint of that transformer. Um, uh, like, a, like an electrical, mechanical fingerprint within the, in the system. Um, so it should always be the same as long as it's taken at the, as long as the connections are made at the exact same site. Um, so if it differs uh, as you, as the transformer gauges, uh, uh, Displacements in the Short question. Sure. On the frequency sleep, you say you have pulses. Do you know the pulse lengths? Uh, that is probably described. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I'll write it down. So, like I said, the okay. uh, FIA. Response analysis, uh, like a fingerprint, uh, and will only change if the deviations or changes happen in the, in the transformer. So here's a comparison between uh, two uh, FRI results, uh, the same with different instruments and the same bushing, but with different cable practices and see some variation. And on the right, you can see that measuring different instruments. In Instruments have the same bushing, but the standardized cabling, so as long as the connections are all the same, you should get the same uh, response. The same result for like 10 hours. No preference on carrier. Just So, uh, the next slide shows the uh, test recovered by 2093. The last product that covers the Midas Micro 2883, uh, which does power factor capacitance in 10 delta. Um, Do you know anything about this board or flying? So our Midas Micro uh, uh, is combined with our 2293, covers all of those tests, like I previously mentioned. Um, it's in one, they're all in rugged boxes, you use transport, uh, very lightweight. Uh, they all have included cables and all the features you need. That's a 12 kilovolt output voltage, uh, minimum frequency, uh, excessive, excessive CPU features. So for a uh, power factor, which the minus micro uh, tests, uh, for any transformer, the 10 delta should be right around 0.1%. Um, anything above 0.7% should be investigated, um, especially above power systems. Uh, looking into uh, inside the bushings for uh, power factor testing, um, it's uh, a dielectric breakdown of oh, uh, cool. dense layers. Uh, so interpreting uh, your power factor reading, um, 
it's below 1.5 times the nameplate value, there's no cause for concern. But if it goes over that, less than three, um, the bushing is the region for concern. And if the power factor exceeds three, you should remove the bushing from the service. Here's a diagram of uh, all the tests that I just talked about and all of our uh, products that we offer to cover it in the 2293, uh, the FAA 310, our MIDA series, etc. Um, so, yeah, if there are any questions? If you have any specific product questions, um, reach out to me or my colleagues, and I'll be able to give you a much more detailed answer. Yeah, any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three, four days of a Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. You can check out uh, small uh, as well. Okay. Okay. So if you have, uh, say, you're working for somebody and they have a limited budget, they want to know what's the one test I should do. I only want to, I only can afford to do one test. What would you recommend? Um, the wine here, you're saying wine means there are a lot of failures if you want to do that. Yeah, so yeah, wine resistance, uh, that's the 2293 does wine resistance. 2293 does tests around there. Uh, and you can buy a base model um, without all the rest of the tests. And it's uh, cheap. If you're looking just for turns ratio, that'd be the uh, TQR. Yeah, yeah, usually, usually my customers ask for wine resistance turns ratio. So very rarely, sometimes they're like, they're nuts and they want everything and they, and they never want to pay for it. Yeah, of course. So the good news about that is that they get a budget for the following year and they want to do, you know, um, So if I want to come in just the minimum, I do wine resistance. Uh, yeah, 2024. What was the other one? Turn ratio. Yeah. So that's the WA no, 2293. So yeah. Okay. So what's the, what's the TTR? That, that's just, uh, just turn yeah, the just WA double. Yes. Yeah, well, I'll know by the email. First session. Are they available? 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 Are they Yeah, <laughs> 
Oh, that's why not? That's why not. Is that why not? Yeah, this can be one resistance. Uh, you all the tests of the 2023 covers. So is is that? So you also do the winding resistance measurement on the low side of that setup. You can do all the test setups. No, oh, it's just that was, out. Okay, okay so are you are you actually ramping up the voltage uh, on the low side in order to avoid uh, high voltages on the high side? Because if you were to apply like a like a step. When you're checking on the low side, you check the test score on the low side, you might get a pretty high pulse on the high side. So what we always recommend is to disconnect the cables on the high side when you're checking on the low side. Depends on what test you're doing. Winding resistance. Okay, so this is configured for both winding resistance and turn ratio. Yes. Now I was just wondering, because depending on the turn ratio, you can uh, create quite high peaks if you inject on the low side, depending on what your test uh, device is inject. I think this is a DC, DC test, right? This is a DC. Yeah, but you always have a pulse when, when you switch on the, the source. I mean, somehow you need to establish the current. So at some point, your, your source is switched on. So you always, you always have a DI by DP. So, with the, I know it's a DC, right? It's when it's, it's stable, but at some point, you have to switch on source. That's actually the transient state, right? Exactly, exactly. When you actually initiate the current, there is there is quite a high DI by DP. So, I will. But if you run it, if you run it, phase and you trace your it in and all that stuff, it a previous statement. I think that was my question on your pulse lengths, because his problem is when the pulse lengths is big enough off, 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 off the test, because you're over that limit already. Now I do know that some, of, and I know from from some stuff that the pulse length sometimes is too short to truly don't get correct readings of the transformer. You measure all the other problems which he is mentioning right now. Right? That's what. Because I understand the problem, I'm seeing it. My question but is not related to accuracy. Huh? My question is not related to accuracy. Not security to the measurement, to the results it's of the measurement. Accuracy, accuracy. 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 yes. It's yes. not related to accuracy. Yes. Yeah. But when you're seeing all the steps, the, 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 you talk about the inertia current when you're turning on, you're, you, you're talking about the supreme stage of the magnetism of the core. Yes. So that's, that's you're getting off on, on the how long on the time you really um, evaluate your test. That's exactly with the PD and the seat, the seat is going to pass through. You yeah. do not get really accurate readings. No, so I'm trying to explain the... Uh, were you referring to now? I think your question was about SFRA tests. No. That's what I was going to be doing. I think we take this off live. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Questions? Got a hand up there? Oh, stretching. Oh, stretching. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you for uh, sitting through my presentation. Uh, see you later today. Hey, thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, before uh, everyone.